morning, everybody. Thank you for this chance to give this talk. Um, <clears throat> ten minutes. I have ten minutes to discuss the uh, literature and the opinions about, about this topic. I think there has been a change in uh, how we fix the A-type distal femur because there are challenges that we have never uh, thought of or dealt with previously and there were problems before. So basically we're dealing with uh, these A-types. The revisit down the memory lane, the implants that we use, the condylar blade, blade plates, DCS, uh, the OLIS plates, these are all still very effective implants. In fact, they can uh, bail us out um, in difficult situations. Then we have a retrograde nail, which is uh, pretty good, but it has problems because this nail spans through a capacious channel a long working arm sometimes uh, create problems for us. Like this, you have a fixation isn't very, very good. You get hypertrophic uh, non-union problems. And then uh, we move on to double plate because uh, we felt that the uh, patient really needed to wait back soon after. We can't really have the old patient sit in a wheelchair for three months and four months then they will never walk in. Then recently, the past, past couple of years, we progressed to nail and plate, which is what we are talking about. Why, why not plate and nail together? And then there are special situations like um, you have a PFNA, a Keflo Madari nail upstairs, and then you, the patient fractures distally, and then we are forced to deal with um, a short uh, segment of bone to fix it, and yet we have to help the patient to be able to walk. We double plate them. And then interprosthetic fractures, another challenging problem. Often they are very comminuted, the bone is uh, not very good. And then this sometimes in young patient, we have uh, fractures at the top and the bottom that we can't use one implant to satisfactorily fix both and uh, ensure good success. So sometimes you have to nail and plate. So, I think the key to success is follow these four things, which are the AO principles. We have to give good reduction, a good and stable fixation. And very important, because the distal femur is a bit unique, um, you have to give the right condition for the fracture to heal on time. And then, so that we can allow the joint to move, and then, hopefully, the patient can wait back as early as possible. Is one implant sufficient? I think these are the problems that we face. Sometimes we had a very osteoporotic bone, stove pipe. The diaphysis is so wide, it goes down to the metaphysis. It's a big, empty channel filled with fat, fat marrow. There's no bone in there. You can get the biggest nail in, and then it's still very, it still wobbles within the diaphysis. And then you get metaphysical comminution, varying degrees. Sometimes there's bone loss, especially anteriorly. It's not stable. You can't get cortical contact at all, not like the young uh, supracondylar fractures. And sometimes it goes so distal until the lateral epicondyle. On the CT scan of this particular fracture, it actually goes all the way down to the lateral epicondyle. It's, you put a, we just do a lateral plate, maybe not so stable. And then a fracture to the nail and uh, interprosthetic fracture. These are challenging situations that, uh, that we face and so that we can help the patient recover fast, not only union, but recover function. In my hospital, we basically we deal with a lot of uh, geriatric fractures. So these are the, really, really the problems that we face and we have to tackle them. So let's start with a retrograde nail. Minimally invasive, very good. Load, load sharing. We medialize the, uh, load, the, uh, the load transmission to the center of the diaphysis, which is physiological. And it's friendly for the biology, small incisions. But we violate the knee. We sometimes cause knee pain. Sometimes we kill the cartilage of the patella uh, by accident, especially if the juniors uh, forget to put the sleeve in and they remove the patella cartilage. You get knee pain. 
And in very distal fractures, is it really suitable for nailing? I think these are challenges that I think the, uh, the implant design tried to tackle. So really, I think the problem with nailing comes down to these two things. Metal devices, instability, and then insufficient fixation at the distal block. I like nailing very much, but this particular case, it has shows these two problems. It took a long time to heal, and we see the blade backing out because the bone isn't very good, and the nail starting to the the distal block starting to migrate. The whole thing trying to cut out. I didn't leave the nail long, but it became like that, as the patient weight bear. Because I let the patient weight bear from post op day one. No, we have no choice. You see these old old patients. So how do we deal with that? Implant design. <clears throat> This nail, we don't, in Singapore, we don't have this nail yet. And then we also do, we can think of nail plate or double plate to deal with these things. These are four common type of nails. Um, on the left, we have the old retrograde nail, the ret and synthesis uh, retrograde, and and retrograde anterior RAFN. Uh. Yeah, the second one is a Zimmer nail, which I like very, very much. The third one is the uh, Striker T2 nail, and the last one is a new nail. Very sexy. So what are we bothered by this? I don't care about what happens upstairs, because proximal lock usually is in pretty good bone. It would be better if they can design a nail that goes up, fires a screw up the femoral neck, but they don't have. The distal part is uh, particularly of interest because it is a distal articular condylar block that is often very small, and uh, sometimes the bone there isn't very good. We ought to have a lot. The more fixation, the more screws you can put in there, the more hardware you can put in there, the better the fixation. Hopefully it survives, gives the fracture a better chance of healing. So we can see that the screws, you know, 6mm, not 9mm, the old nail is 13mm, it's a bit too far away. You can probably just put one screw and one spiral plate in there. Maybe it's not sufficient. So the new, I like the Zimmer nail because it can find four screws within, within 45 mm. But in Asians, you know, our, our patients are quite small, it's often very short. So we can't, there isn't much space to fire screws. Often I can only get three. And I like the oblique screws. So these are the different designs that uh, the, the uh, implant makers try to come up with. And the last, the last nailing system, the TFN, the, the uh, ref, R -A -R -R -F -N advanced, which comes with a locking plate attachment linked with locking bolts. And then it has a compression, uh, on a compression washer on the other side. Plating. Meep. We can use plating. We like Meepo. Very, very nice to do. Put in a single plate, small incisions, suitable for very distal fractures. And some situations where you can't nail when the for example, the intercondylar split, you get a Hoffer. In the, we get Hoffers in geriatric fractures too. We've got to study the CT scan properly. Disadvantages is low bearing. But sometimes we go very, very long and then we make the uh, construct too flexible. We, we are afraid of putting too many screws also to make it too rigid. So we, 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 sometimes we get, don't get good success before, because we, the conditions are not right for timely fracture healing. And then there is a lateral or medial soft tissue irritation depending on where we put a plate. Problems with plating. It's the same with nailing too, actually. We get, we get alignment problems in the coronal plane, rotation, <coughs> excuse me, and sagittal plane. Sometimes the plate doesn't fit our anatomy and then we get irritation. And then we force the plate to conform to the bone and then it will induce a deformity. Or we let the plate sit and then we ex often we accept a valgus deformity, which is not too good. And sometimes the union is a, a non-union problem is as high as 22%. This particular patient, I tried to go along, I couldn't get a screw up there. See, the plate doesn't fit very well, actually, despite trying to contour. And then <coughs> I had to change the plate. It didn't unite because it went hypertrophic. It was way too flexible, one of my earlier cases. So we try to go long, don't put too many screws, it doesn't heal time, on time. We have to tackle that. Now we come to double, double fixation, oh no, uh, nail versus plate. Really, there's no, really no, not much of a difference. Two recent meta-analysis or systematic review, there's hardly any 
significant thing. I think they, there's an overlap between the, the randomized trials, the large cohort studies that co these, two, these two covers. Really, there's too much of a difference. Maybe locking plate a little bit more problematic. Uh, another randomized trial, uh, really, there's no much of a difference too between these two, single plate and retrograde nail. So we come to double fixation. Why we think of double fixation? Because we can give the area much more rigidity <coughs> and distribute the stress maybe a little bit better. So we provide a stable fixation, yet allow the patient to weight bear. So double plate has two times higher torsional and uh, 1.5 times higher axial stiffness compared in cadaveric osteoporotic bone compared to single plate. Single plate, okay. Whereas new plate comes in uh, after double plating. So we are afraid that double plate is stiff, especially if you, you, we, we use a larger plate, put too many screws medially. I think it's a non-union generator, you make it too rigid. So indications for double plating, uh, these are my indications. Uh, media combination is very distal, sometimes a bone loss, and uh, intra-op uh, stress test is positive. If uh, there was one case, I had to put a medial plate because I thought lateral plate was sufficient. I tried to stress the knee and it's, the whole thing started moving. Uh, no choice. You could reinforce. You could augment it. Uh, periprosthetic fractures. <clears throat> Outcomes of double plating. Actually, most we are, the, despite the problem that uh, we, are, uh, we are afraid too much rigidity is really most studies say that uh, healing time is no difference at all compared to single plate or retrograde nail. And the function, functional outcomes are quite similar. Now, we talk about nail plus plate. Why we like that? Why you start doing that? Because biomechanic, there's a biomechanical advantage of nail, nailing. But we are trying to tackle the problems of uh, the two problems I, I, I highlighted earlier, metadiphysial instability, insufficient fixation with a additional adjunctive plate. <clears throat> the, the X-ray on the right side uh, is from uh, Liporis paper. It's very, very nice. He talks about, um, these are the steps that he talked about, and then um, he spans the femoral neck, goes the plate goes up, far and up, to fire screws into the femoral neck, and he bends the plate posteriorly, approximately, so that we can accommodate the screws up the neck. And then we link a plate to the nail with a, uh, with a screw. So the comparison between uh, single plate and, uh, and uh, combined nail plate fixation, really it, lo it seems that it's quite promising. No non-unions, no failures. And then we have to bear in mind that even though we throw a plate in, we, can't, we have to pay attention to the nail because a uh, loose nail with a plate really still not, not too ideal. So take home points. We have to decide, are we treating a young patient or old patient? I think an old patient, we have to give immediate weight bearing because of distal femoral fractures is the same morbidity and mortality as the hip, geriatric hip fracture. We have to design a construct and then we have to ensure that the fixation is favorable for timely fracture healing. Of course, we are limited by our technical capabilities, implant availability and then cost also. So my owner's opinion, um, retrograde nail, single plate, no difference. You can do anything you want in the right situation. We need to ensure early weight bearing. To, to give that in a geriatric patient and special, special, special situations, it means I think we should do a double fixation. But bear in mind cost, because you still implant to treat one fracture. Sometimes implant not available. And as a technical aspect, nail plate, is very, very technically demanding. You get longer op time and a longer fluoroscopy time. With double plating, we avoid using small fragment plates medially. Put, don't put too many screws. It becomes too rigid, it becomes a non-union generator. Nail plate, sexy, but very technically demanding. All right, I thank you for your attention.